Hello students, welcome to this new video on my channel. In this video, we are going to revise one very small but important topic of class 12th standard physics. And as you already know from the title, today we are going to revise the topic of, yes, interference of light. It comes under wave optics chapter of class 12th. Okay, so as I said, it is already a very small and simple topic. But then too, many students find it difficult sometimes to deal with uh, questions from this topic. So, so today I will try my level best to make this topic very clear for you. And we will also discuss uh, the basic theory of this topic, the basic formulas of this topic and also some extra formulas, extra shortcut tricks to solve the MCQs for NEET and JE exams from this topic. Okay. So without wasting time, let's get quickly started. So first of all, we'll see that what is interference. Okay, obviously, um, if you are trying to understand it very clearly, first you should understand it, what do you mean by interference? Okay, so let's see what is interference basically. Okay. See, interference is a phenomena which is shown by waves. It is not shown by a particle. If any thing is there, which is showing the interference, that means it must be a wave. So it's a phenomena strictly shown by the waves. Keep it in mind. Now, what is interference exactly? See here. Suppose here if we keep some source S1, which produces waves. Okay. And near to it, we are keeping another source S2, which also produces the identical waves. So S1 and S2 are the sources. Now, let us draw the wave produced by the S1 source. See, I will draw the wave this way. This solid line that you can see, think this solid line okay, represents a crest of a wave. Okay. All of you are familiar that way. what is crest you know. So suppose solid line represents crest of a wave and after crest you know that in a wave trough also comes. I am assuming that it is a transverse wave. Huh? So, in transfer waves consist of crest and trough. So, think uh, the dotted line represents the trough of the wave. Okay. Then after trough, here again one crest will be there. Like this. After crest, again trough will be there. This way the chain of crest and trough will be there. Alternate chain. See. So, think of the waves I am denoting by this symbol. Okay. It's a two-dimensional wave. It is traveling in the two directions as shown in the figure. Now, suppose S2 is another source which is producing the exactly identical waves. It is also producing exactly identical waves, like this. See. Okay, try to observe what I am drawing. Solid line, then dotted, then again solid. And last one more dotted will draw. Okay. So these are the two waves created by the two sources. Okay. Now if you look at this region, look at this. Here can you see that waves coming from the both the sources are overlapping. Now here the waves are overlapping. So this overlapping of the waves, that is called interference actually. Interference means when the waves overlap with each other. Now if you look at this interfering region where the waves are overlapping. See I am here finding some special points. If you look at this point, here if you look at it, solid and solid lines are meeting. right? Solid line is meeting with solid line means crest is meeting with crest. Now, here at this point, the crest of the one wave is meeting with the crest of other wave. You know that if crest of the two waves meet each other, it is called a constructive interference. And during this interference, what happened? The amplitude of this wave and amplitude of this wave, they get added with each other and this becomes total amplitude. Let us suppose the amplitude of the first wave is A1 and amplitude of second wave is A2. So here how much will be amplitude? A1 plus A2. So remember when crest meet with crest, this is the point where crest is meeting with crest. Something like this will occur. Constructive interference. Now look at this point. Here if you see dotted line is meeting with another dotted line. That means trough of the one wave is meeting with a trough of other wave. Like this. 
So that is also constant in reference only and these two will be added and total displacement become this way. So these are the points which I have shown you. These are the points of constructive interference. Okay. In this. This also. Okay. But if you look at this point here, solid line is meeting with a dotted line. Can you see here? Look okay, at here. Solid line is meeting with dotted line. That means crest of the one wave is meeting with a trough of the other wave. Okay. So look at it. Crest of the one wave is meeting with a trough of the other wave. You know that what will happen, these waves are opposite in displacement. Na? So these two waves meet each other and they will in fact cancel each other. The total displacement will be here A1 minus A2, not A1 plus A2. So this kind of a interference is called as destructive interference. So at this point, which I have shown you by the cross symbol, here remember, destructive interference is occurring. Similarly here if you see, solid line of the one wave and dotted line from the other wave are meeting means it's a destructive interference here also if you observe it is destructive okay so here again if you see if you observe here here also destructive if you see here this is constructive interference okay. so if you draw properly now you will see that uh, you will get one line of destructive interference then constructive interference then destructive and then again constructive. The alternate pattern of constructive and destructive interference you will obtain. Okay. If uh, these waves are suppose light waves, imagine that if these are light waves. So in case of light waves, at constructive interference, we get a bright points where brightness suddenly increases. And the points where destructive interference is occurring, there we get a dark points. Okay. So in case of light, you will get an alternate pattern of bright dark, bright dark points. So this is called as uh, interference and uh, this pattern of uh, alternate bright and dark point that you are getting this pattern is called as interference pattern. Okay, so now we learn the new thing that the conditions for getting steady interference pattern. Okay, first of all, let's see that what do you mean by steady interference pattern? See, this uh, alternate formation of bright and dark points, I told you that this is called uh, interference pattern. If you keep some screen over here. Okay, on this screen also this bright and dark points will be formed alternately. It means you will get an interference pattern on the screen. If the position of the bright point, suppose if I am saying that here some bright point is there. If this point constantly remain bright only, if the position of the bright point not changing, the point which is bright, it remain constantly bright only. The point which is dark, it remain constantly dark only. So that is called steady pattern. Okay, steady stable pattern if you want. For that some conditions are there. Let's see what are the condition. The first condition is the light or you can say any wave, the wave which is coming from the two sources. The wave coming from the two sources must have same wavelength. Okay. Okay. These two waves which are coming from S1, S2, they must have same wavelength. That means I can say that sources must emit the light of same wavelength. Now, that's why we can say sources must be monochromatic. Keep it in mind. If wavelength of both of them is not equal, then what happens, you know, the distance between bright and dark point will not be remaining same. The bright and dark point will not be equally spaced. Wavelength same is compulsorily needed. Otherwise, you will not get a good proper pattern of interference. Second, we need also the waves of same amplitude here. Okay. Why same amplitude is required? See. The point where a bright is forming, that is constant interference, at that point amplitude was A1 plus A2 and that is okay. But the point where dark is forming, at that point amplitude was A1 minus A2. If the two waves have exactly same amplitude, that is A1 is equal to A2, then this A1 minus A2 will come completely zero. Right? Means dark point will be a really dark point. At dark point the amplitude will be strictly zero. To get dark point as a fully dark to get zero amplitude at the dark point, to get it at fully dark, you need same amplitude. Even if amplitude is not same, interference can obtain. But if amplitude is not same, the dark point will not be a fully dark point. Contrast will not be there between bright and dark. So for getting a good contrast between bright and dark, amplitude same is required. Yes, but it is not a very compulsory condition. Even if amplitude not same, we can get interference. Third and the most important condition is 
for getting steady interference pattern the next thing is the two sources must be coherent two sources must be coherent you must have heard about this thing but sometime i have seen that students are not clear that what do you mean by coherent sources so i'll make it clear for you but it is a compulsory condition sources must be coherent see imagine that these are the two sources suppose what we observe that when crest is emitted from the s1 source at that time from s2 also crest is emitted both are emitting same thing crest crest if this is happening now i can say the phase difference between the two sources is zero okay phase difference is zero suppose this is happening now this wave will travel further this wave will also travel further and suppose they meet here assuming at this point bright is forming okay now if i observe after some time again some time later i will observe again so again if suppose from here crest is coming and from here also at that time crest is coming means still phase difference is zero only that means phase difference is maintained okay okay then what happens uh, definitely here again bright point will be obtained means this bright point will be stable you will get a bright point only again so if the phase difference is maintained between the two sources then such sources are called as coherent okay coherent sources are those in which the phase difference between two sources is maintained see here i have taken as phase difference as zero when this crest is released here also crest is released but it is not compulsory that phase difference should be zero only whatever phase difference exist 0 180 whatever phase difference must remain constant okay it must be maintained then what happens this bright point suppose forming here this bright point will also be maintained so coherent sources are necessary remember this point if the sources are not coherent interference steady interference cannot be obtained okay getting so coherence means the whatever is a phase difference between the waves released by these sources the phase difference must be maintained such sources are called as coherent sources now here regarding this i'll tell you one small point see uh, we can take light sources also if you want to take if you want to show the interference of light you will take s1 s2 as a light sources okay if you take uh, two separate light sources suppose if you take two separate light sources it is impossible they, that you get a coherency two separate light sources cannot be coherent okay why because to understand this point you have to understand the how light is emitted from the sources actually light is emitted on the atomic level when in any source electron jumps from higher orbit to lower orbit at that time photon is released you know there's a phenomenon in atom chapter when electron jumps from higher orbit to lower then only light is released so it's very difficult to uh, maintain this condition that uh, when electron jump in the higher orbit to lower in s1 source at that time similar electron will jump in s2 source also it is very difficult to control at atomic level that uh, when light coming from s1 at same moment light should also come from s2 it's difficult coherency cannot be maintained if it is a light sources okay so it was very difficult initially to prove that light also do interference because in the light coherency cannot be maintained remember by taking two separate sources coherence you cannot get okay keep it in mind this thing okay apart from this these conditions are explained apart from this few more conditions are there which will later discuss uh, this in small i'll tell you in in short suppose the distance between sources and the screen is capital d and the distance between two sources is small d you are familiar with these symbols right so the one more condition for getting steady stable interference pattern is small d must be very much lesser than capital d capital d must be large small d must be small right so these are the conditions for getting steady interference pattern okay now we'll go ahead okay so as i told you that with the light waves it is very difficult to get interference because in light waves coherence sources are not possible two sources of light two separate sources of light cannot be coherent okay phase difference cannot be maintained in case of light sources so what happens in the initial days suppose if you go 200 years back at that time scientists tried a lot to get interference with light because if light shows interference then it was confirmed that light is also a wave but uh, it was very difficult to find the interference of light 
So, but uh, thankfully, in the year 1801, with the efforts of great scientist Thomas Young, okay, Thomas Young successfully showed that uh, even light shows interference. It, Thomas Young did one experiment which you already know. It is called Young's double slit experiment, right? So he did one simple experiment which is called Young's double slit experiment. In short, we will call as YDSE. Okay, so with the help of this experiment, Th Thomas Young clearly shown that yes, light is also doing interference. And when the world saw that light is also doing interference, so it was confirmed that light is a wave because waves only can do interference, right? So let's see how Young's double slit experiment was performed. Okay, in Young's double slit experiment, the Young took one source of light. Okay, he never took the two sources of light. Then here he kept one board. Board he kept. In that board he made a two small holes. Okay, like this. Okay. Two small holes he made. Okay. Holes can be made and even slits can be made. You know the difference between hole or slit. So the holes are also okay and slits are also okay. These holes or these slits I call as S1, S2. So and after that here he kept one screen. Okay. So what happens? The light which is coming from this bulb. Okay. At that time bulb was not there. He actually used sunlight also for doing this experiment. But here we can show bulb. From this bulb light will be emitted in all directions like this. Correct. So light will fall on these two so, uh, S1, S2 slits. So after that the light will come out of the slit. According to the hygiene principle, the light which is falling on the S1 slit, that light will work like a secondary source of light and again new wavelets will be produced in the forward direction like this. Okay. Like, like this will happen. Okay. You have seen this diagram earlier also. Like this. Hmm. So the light which is coming from S1 and the light which is coming from S2. These lights will interfere with each other and alternate pattern of bright and dark points will be obtained. Na? So we, we are not drawing an exact diagram but uh, the light will travel in forward direction like this. And uh, you will get in this entire region you will get the interference pattern. Here you will get the alternate bright and dark points you will get. But as I said, coherence is needed for getting the interference. So how coherence is maintained? Here S1 and S2 are acting like a two sources. But if you observe light falling on the S1 and the light falling on S2, is it coming from same source? Na? Yes. And uh, the distance from S to S1 and the distance from S to S2 is equal. So what happens? Because of that, the light which is falling on S1 and the light which is falling on S2 these two lights falling on S1, S2, they were like coherent. Okay. These two light waves were coherent because actually they are coming from the same source only. Okay. So by deriving the two sources, S1, S2, from the single source S, he successfully got the interference. Remember, here two separate sources are not used. One source he used. Now look, I am going further. Exactly, uh, this about this S1, S2 are the sources. See, this is about the exact midpoint of this. Exactly in front of this midpoint here. Means exactly at the midpoint of this S1, S2. Here, always bright point is coming, which we call as a central bright. Right? It's called central bright. Then dark comes. Then again bright. Then again dark. Like that, interference pattern is obtained. But center always you get bright, which is usually called as central bright. Okay. Why do we get this bright and dark? We'll discuss on it. But central bright we'll get. Okay. Now, these bright and darks are also given numbers. The central bright is also known as a zeroth bright. Its number is zero. Let's say its number I'm writing as M. It's, it's zeroth bright. Its number M is zero. This is first dark. It's M equal to one. This is first bright. After central bright, this is called first bright. For this also M1. This is called second dark. M equal to 2. This way, bright and dark are having numbers. First dark, first bright, second dark, second bright and so on. Here also dark is there. It's a first dark. Okay. 
Zeroth dark never exists. Zeroth bright only exists. Central bright is called as zeroth bright. Then dark, then again bright, like that. Sometimes we can do like this also. The bright and dark which are form, found ne uh, below the central bright, on one side of the central bright, they are taken as minus one, minus two like that. On the upper side, we'll take plus one, plus two like that. Okay. This way, an interference pattern is obtained. Okay. This was Young's double slit experiment. A very famous and you can say very useful experiment in physics to demonstrate the wave nature of light. Getting? Okay. So sometimes these bright and dark points are obtained if these sources are in the form of holes. Say a bright point, dark point will be obtained. If these uh, sources are in the form of slit, they are in the form of long slits. So here also in the form of long slits, you will get a bright and dark point. So, these bright and dark points are also sometimes known as bright and dark fringes. Okay. Fringes also they are called as. Okay. So, this is Young's double slit experiment. Now, in the Young's double slit experiment, okay, we will see some mathematical formulas which students should remember always to deal with Young's double slit experiment. See some mathematical formulas. Okay, so see this, let's say S1, S2 are the two sources and P is any point on the screen. On the screen this at the middle of S1, S2 here central bright is obtained. Let us suppose P is any point on the screen. The distance of this P point from the central bright, this distance is let's say X. Okay, so now what happens, definitely the light which is coming from S1 will travel this much distance to reach P. The light coming from S2 will travel somewhat longer distance to reach up to P. See this. So if you see the path of S2P is longer than path of S1P. Na? So if you do like this S2P minus S1P from this path if you subtract this path this is known as path difference between the two waves arriving at P point or it is a path difference at point P. So, path difference at any point is nothing but the, the S2P minus S1P. Okay. For different different points on the screen, path difference will be different different, right? Okay. For example, if you talk about central bright, at central bright means the light which is coming at central bright this way, see. See this path and see this path. These paths are identical, check. So, for central bright, if you talk about central bright, path difference is zero between the waves okay. okay so if i ask you the point which having a path difference zero that is central bright but p point at p point there is some path difference that is s2p minus s1p remember path difference is given by this formula x small d by capital d okay. it can be proven but we are avoiding derivation here just formula revision the x is a i can say x is a distance of this p point from the central bright in other words, we can say that X is a position of P point on the screen. Okay, So, X is a position of P point on the screen. Different points on the screen will have a different positions. So, X small d by capital D. That is nothing but path difference. Keep this formula in your mind. Okay, So, at every point, path difference is there. Now, you might be knowing that if this path difference, let's talk about this. If this path difference exists, okay, the two waves arriving at P point, there exists a path difference between them. If path difference exists, the phase difference also exists between the two waves. Okay, phase difference also exists. Let us suppose uh, the wave coming from S1 and the wave coming from S2. Between these two waves, initially there is no phase difference. Initially they are same only. But here, this wave travel less path and here it travel more path. Phase difference will exist if path difference exists. You might be knowing the phase difference between the two waves arriving at P denoted by this phi symbol. It's given by 2 pi upon lambda times path difference. Keep this formula in your mind. This formula can be proven in the wave chapter of class 11th. Phase difference between two waves arriving at P is equal to 2 pi by lambda time path difference between the two waves. Okay, So if path difference exists, phase difference also exists between the two waves. Keep it in mind. Okay. 
now next time telling you that uh, at p point we got the formula for part difference okay but uh, you know that at p point bright point can be obtained sometime dark point can also be obtained let's see what is the condition for getting bright point means when this point will be definitely a bright what's the condition for getting a bright point so for that rule is that if path difference s2p minus s1p this is path difference if path difference is even multiple of the lambda by 2 if path difference is even multiple of lambda by 2 then point remain bright don't worry if you do not know this i will prove it for you but first listen if the part difference is even multiple of lambda by 2 just like 2 times lambda by 2 or 4 times lambda by 2 or 6 times lambda by 2 that means if part difference is lambda or 2 lambda or 3 lambda if part difference is in general even multiple of lambda by 2 then that point is used to be bright we'll prove it don't worry okay so let's prove first of all for you that how it will be bright point see to prove it here i'm taking simple diagram i'll draw i think this is s1 source from here the wave is coming suppose the wave travel this much distance to reach up to p wave travel this much distance to reach up to p you can understand how much is this distance okay. it's one wave and then quarter wave or you can say one wave and then uh, crest crest is arriving at p now light coming from s2 suppose this light travel more path because its path difference is there suppose second wave travel this much path this much path it traveled so this much path it traveled to reach up to p so again if you see at p point crest has arrived s1 and s2 the light coming from s1 s2 crest has arrived here so this crest crest will added and definitely you will get a constructive interference at point p right but if you see the path difference is there between them up to here if you see path is same only the extra path which s2 has covered this man this is lambda right distance from crest to crest lambda so what's the path difference between them lambda yes so when path difference between them is lambda you can see constructive interference is occurring part of lambda if you multiply 2 2 it become even multiple of lambda by 2 right okay one more time we'll show this see suppose s1 from here the wave comes to the p point and wave travel this much distance see okay try to understand this much is one wave and then this now light coming from s2 okay it also traveled and but it travel more path let's say this much see carefully up to here it is same one wave two wave then one more wave and then this okay so this much path the the wave traveled to reach so now again if you see at p point crest coming from s1 and also crest is coming from s2 they'll meet so constant interference will happen because crest crest will meet but how much extra distance they have traveled this much this much or total this much this is extra distance na huh? so lambda and lambda to path difference between these two waves is how much 2 lambda at just 2 2 we can write down this as a 4 lambda by 2 it's again even multiple of lambda by 2 understood so remember whenever path difference between two waves is even multiple of lambda by 2 hmm? it's going to be a bright point see whenever path difference between the two waves arriving at a point path difference at a point is even multiple of lambda by 2 it's going to be a bright point now even number how will you write in general we'll write as a 2n lambda by 2 okay even number you write on as a 2n lambda by 2 here n starts from 0 1 2 3 4 like that okay just try to substitute this value definitely you will go on getting the even numbers first of all when you put n equal to 0 part difference will come 0 part difference is 0 denotes central bright okay remember part difference 0 is for central bright so when you put n equal to 0 means you are actually talking about central bright you get a condition of central bright now you put n equal to 1 check it will come even number 2 lambda by 2 if you put n equals to 2 
it will become 4 lambda by 2. Okay, so this way you will get the even numbers. Here remember one thing, why we are writing in the form of 2n? When you write it in the form of 2n, this n, can you see? n denotes the number of that bright point. For example, in this formula, suppose n is coming 0. So it indicates 0th bright point, where that is central bright. If n you are putting 1, this condition, n is coming 1 actually from this. So means it is the first dark bright point. So here n denotes the number of that bright point. Okay. Clear? Now similarly, if uh, if we calculate the path difference at one point, path difference at any point, suppose we calculate, and path difference is coming, suppose, odd multiple of lambda by 2. Okay. So definitely that point will be a dark point. Remember, in interference, if path difference is odd multiple of lambda by 2, it's going to be a dark point. Okay. This, huh, we'll just keep it in mind. Okay, odd multiple means you can write odd number as this way 2n minus 1 lambda by 2. This way we can write odd. Where n start from 1, 2, 3, and so on. Okay. We'll explain you, don't worry. If you put n equals to 1, check. If you put n equal to 1, you will get a 1 lambda by 2. That is, 1 is odd. Come 3 lambda by 2. 3 is odd number. So by putting these values, definitely you will get odd number. But why we are writing this way? From this formula, the n that you get, this n will denote the number of that dark point. From example, from this formula, suppose n is coming 7, that means it's seventh dark point. So, okay, so this n denotes the number of that dark point. And if you remember, n, uh, zeroth dark do not exist. That's why here n should not start from 0. 1 only it will start. Okay. So they just remember these formulas. And uh, here, n denotes the number of that dark point. Okay. So these are the some set of formulas which you should keep from Young's double set experiment in your mind. Okay. Now I am proceeding to the next formulas. See, here suppose bright and dark points we are getting. Bright, dark, bright, dark. You might be knowing that uh, distance between successive bright points, okay. distance between successive bright points or the distance between successive dark point. What the distance is called as? It's called as fringe width, right? Denoted by beta symbol, beta. So successive distance between bright points or distance between dark points, it's called fringe width, beta. All of you know the formula of beta, it's lambda d by d. Okay. The formula you must be knowing. Okay. So keep these formulas in your mind. We'll also discuss some extra formulas from this chapter, but this is first of all, uh, you can say textbook level or simple level formulas which every student should know. Now there are for JE and for NEED exams there are some more extra formulas, extra points to be discussed. That will do. But please make it clear up to this. Okay. Okay. So let's go further now. Okay. So see now this is Young's double set experiment once again. Okay. Now we'll discuss some extra points but before I discuss those some extra formulas first uh, try to see this diagram and uh, See each and everything of this diagram. Just observe it. Analyze this. Okay. So these are two sources. Always in the middle of S1, S2 here, central bright is formed. First dark, first bright, second dark, second bright. This way it's entirely interference pattern. Now see, if I ask you the distance between first bright and center, means if I want to measure the distance of first bright from center, you know distance of bright to bright will be beta. Okay, so what's the distance of first bright from center? It's beta. And see, this distance will also be beta from first bright to second bright. So if I ask you the distance of second bright from center, it will be 2 beta. Okay, distance of first bright from center, it's 1 beta. So in general, here we can make one formula like this, that uh, distance of nth bright from the center, huh? I'm taking from center only, distance of nth bright from center is n beta. Don't forget this. Okay. So remember, distance of nth bright from center will be n beta. Now look here. Now see this carefully. This distance is uh, beta, correct? So how much will be this distance? This one. Definitely you can see that this distance will be half of the beta. That means 0 0.5 beta. 
so distance of first dark from center is 0.5 beta so it's not 1 beta it's 0.5 beta now see this distance if i talk it's a distance from dark to dark this distance you know that's beta so see carefully so what's the distance of second dark from center second dark na from center it's beta plus 0.5 beta that is 1.5 beta so look it's a second dark but its distance from the center is 1.5 beta right second and 1.5 see what's the relation okay now here distance of first dark from center first dark from center is 0.5 beta see what's the relation if you look at this from this 2 if you subtract the half from the 2 you subtract half it become 1.5 from 1 if you subtract half it become 0.5 Similarly, we can find out that the distance of third dark from the center will be two point five beta. That means subtracting half. Every time you subtract half from that number, that much times beta will be there. So, in general, if I write, if I write this way, distance of suppose mth dark. If I talk, distance of mth dark from center again, it will be take that m. Please subtract zero point five. Means subtract a half from this. That much times beta. Okay. The very important formula. Keep it in mind. It's a formula for distance of any bright or dark point from the center. Okay. If suppose they ask you, if they ask you the distance not from center, if they ask you the distance between nth bright point and the mth dark point, if they ask. Distance between nth bright, suppose, and mth dark. Okay, and this bright and dark which I am taking, they are on the same side of the center, on same side of the center. Okay, so just imagine that uh, this is let's say center. Distance of nth bright from center. It will be n beta, right? Okay, and distance of mth dark from center. So this is mth dark. Distance will be m minus half beta. But now I want to find distance between these two. This distance. So it will be like uh, n beta minus m minus half beta. Okay. No need to remember this formula like this. Sometime it may happen from this term. You have to subtract this term also. Whichever term is bigger from that smaller term will be subtracted. No, so actually, if you want to find distance between some mth bright and nth dark point like that, distance between two bright or darks or distance between two brights on present on the same side of the center, then what do you do? Distance from center you measure. You know the formulas for measuring distance from center. The distance is you subtract. Then you will get it. Okay. For example, to make it very clear, let's take one simple numerical example. If I want to find out the distance between, suppose seventh dark point and tenth bright point, okay, present on the same side of the center. Okay. Okay, then what we'll do? It's very simple. First, understand what's the distance of tenth bright. From center, it will be ten beta, and what will be distance of seventh dark from center? Seventh dark, na? It will be six point five beta, like this. So from ten beta, we'll subtract six point five beta. Correct? You'll get a three point five beta. That is the distance between seventh dark and tenth bright. So I hope this example is very clear. Okay, this way you can find out the distance between any two bright or dark points. So keep it in mind. This diagram eventually very helpful. Try to understand this diagram. Okay. So for dark, it's slightly different. You have to subtract zero point five. That much beta. Okay. And for dark, it's okay. For bright, distance of nth bright from center will be n beta. Okay. So I hope this point is clear.